Hi, my name is Nick Gagan from DPI's API team, and I want to give you a short demo of the new BPass system. BPass was created to bring together the public API site permits from all New South Wales government agencies into one place, making it easier for beekeepers to manage their existing permits and to find and apply for new sites. It's available all hours and accessible anywhere you can get an internet connection. We've rolled out VPASS to Forestry Corporation New South Wales and New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife Services sites and permits. We're working with LLS to bring in their data and hope to add LLS sites and permits over the next few weeks. VPASS shares a login and password with DPI Biosecurity's Byte system. This means that once set up, you can use the same login to manage your beekeeping registration and your public API sites. The first time you use BPASS, you'll need to log in first to the Byte system to authorize BPASS to use your Byte details. I'll take you through a short demo to help you with this. Once you've logged in successfully, you can go directly to BPASS to log in for future sessions. For your first login, make sure you're on a PC or tablet with a good size screen and a good internet connection. First, Go to www.bfs.dpi.newsouthwales.gov.au, nsw.gov.au, to log into Biosecurity and Food Safety's Byte Beekeeping Registration System. And then you'll follow the steps on the DPI BPASS page. So I'll take you through a short demo. So I'm using the test system here, so it looks just like the real system slightly different. So I'm using a login and password that I've previously used for the Byte BFS by security system. Um, you will need to set that up first. If you have trouble, uh, if you have not received an email or you have trouble logging in, the details to contact the BFS help desk are on our DPI BPASS webpage. So once you've entered your login details, you're gonna get into the Byte portal page. So the home page of the Byte portal includes a dashboard with various uh, opportunities to add news, etc. But we're gonna go straight into the my authorization section. So you'll find a link to that on the left hand side called My Authorizations. We'll click on that and that's going to take you through to your beekeeping registration details. So these beekeeping registration details, once you connect to BPASS, will be shared with BPASS and that means that once you keep your registration up to date, we don't have need to check your registration with you directly. We can take it from uh, the Byte portal. So once you've gone to My Authorization and you see your registration details, you then need to go to the right hand side and click on Access BPASS. So tap on that. If it's the first time that you're logging into BPASS, you'll have to agree to allow Byte to share your registration details with BPASS. It's a click, quick two-step process. Uh, because I've already been through that process once, I'm not going to show it to you. And once you've been through that and you've accepted that you're going to share your information, you're going to click on OK. And then it'll take you through to the DPI BPASS system. So just to recap, in order to get into Byte, you should have received a letter and that outlines the registration details for the Byte portal. If you haven't, then get in touch with the uh, Biosecurity and Food Safety team. Details are on the BPASS page on the DPI website. So now we're in BPASS. This is the new portal, and we can see straight away the key functions are available to you with these large icons. So, my Applications takes you to any previous applications that you've submitted for apiary sites and permits. And you can check the status of those and progress those applications. View Available Apiary Sites shows you 
the existing occupied and available potential apiary sites um, that are in the system. At present, we have just the Forestry Corporation and National Parks sites loaded into the system. And then in the future, we'll also have the LS sites as well. And we'll come back to that in a moment to have a quick look at that. The My Apiary Sites and Permits displays a list and a map of your existing sites and permits. So you can verify exactly what you currently have at any stage and you can pick your sites. If you want to cancel the site, you can do that through this system. Um, but you can also see exactly which sites and permits you currently have. And the last section is my invoices and payments. So this allows you to see any invoices that you might have received for your public APRI sites and then also to pay them directly. And you have three options here. You can use uh, a credit card online, you can use BPAY, or you can use a direct uh, pay ID, which is like a direct payment transfer. So we're gonna have a quick look at the available APRI sites. So you've got two options to get to there. You can either click on the available sites at the top or you can click on these icons on the home page. So the first time you load this map, it can take a little while to load up because there's a lot of information in it. So I definitely advise um, visiting the first time through a screen with a good size screen and a good internet connection. Uh, you'll find that once you've used it once or twice, it'll load a little bit faster. So. What we can see, two parts of the screen. On the left-hand side, you can see some filters. So that allows you to uh, include, if you want to, just the agencies, for example, that you want to look at. You can also search on the map for a forestry number, a suburb, um, or a, um, a national park. Um, you can also choose just to show vacant sites only. Below that, you can see any sites that you have selected already on the map. We'll come back to that in a minute. So if we look at the map, you can see that the occupied sites are designated in two ways. If they're a national parks or a LLS site, they're designated with a black hive icon. You can see a cluster of occupied sites. So you can move around with your mouse, you can drag the map around and you can use the plus and minus to zoom in to see the sites. If they're forestry sites, they'll either be designated with a grey grid and that designates a, a, a site that has an existing permit or if they're available as potential apiary sites, they'll be designated with a purple grid. You can see as you zoom in further into the map, greater levels of detail, allowing you to see uh, road names where available. Um, in national parks areas, you can see the gates. You can also see the uh, mustard colored exclusion areas where in state forests, you cannot place your beekeeping sites. So that's an area where you're not allowed to uh, have a set down area on the site. So I'll just zoom back out again. You can use your mouse button or, or your mouse scroll or you can use a minus. So if you click on any particular site, you'll either see the details of the site, including the name, the type allocation, so it's long term vacant or it's EOI, the park name, um, and actually, you can see also whether any holds or applications have already been received for this site. So none's received for this site so far. Um, I'm going to click on apply. You see the site's been added to the list on the left hand side. It's now listed in here. So then if I select a site, one of the gray sites, which is not available, um, so there's an existing permit on that side, or there's another reason why that's not available. It'll say site unavailable and you cannot apply or request a hold for that. If you'd like to visit a site before you apply for it and determine its suitability, um, you can request a hold for that site. So you click on hold 
it'll add it again to the list and you'll see LTV site the holds it's been added here and if you submit that hold and you're accepted for it then you have two business days plus the rest of today um, to apply for the to visit those sites determine if they're suitable and then apply for them and if you're the first person then obviously you'll retain that priority uh, for those two days that you have to apply for so once you have been through the map and you've selected some sites that are of interest to you and you can continue adding as, as many as you like um, then you would then apply for your sites so if i click on confirm and apply it'll take us to a page that will capture your details so this information will be partially partially pre-filled from the buy portal this test system actually isn't feeding it through but in the real system it is live system you can add additional information which will be retained for future applications so it means that if you're applying for multiple sites you don't have to keep on entering all of the information almost all the information will be retained your registration details as well will come through from uh, from the biosecurity system when you're happy with it you just click on next to go ahead so i'm not going to go ahead and complete that process but um, it does submit your sites into a approval process and once approved by the agency responsible for that site you will then uh, be sent an invoice um, by email um, once you pay for that invoice so when you go into your we'll go back we'll go to home you can go into my invoices and payments and you can make payment for your invoice there uh, you'll be issued a permit document straight away through the system so that was just a quick introduction to b pass uh, hopefully you've got a bit of a feel for how to get into it and uh, you've had a preview of uh, how the system works um, any registered beekeeper can access bee, bee pass now the forestry corporation and national parks permits have been loaded up the lls sites will be loaded in the next few weeks and so we're very excited about bee pass and uh, we hope you are too we will be scheduling further training sessions online training sessions and working with the apris association to do some uh, in-person training sessions so go to the gpi website uh, the, look at the bpass page keep an eye on there or email apri.sites at newsouthwales.gov sorry at apri.sites at dpi.newsouthwales.gov.au um, and register for our email list and you'll get updated as new sites come on board and as we schedule new training sessions so that's all i've got uh, to take you through today um, do jump on the dpi website um, there is a lot of information in there including how to's um, on all the major functions of b pass if you're having trouble uh, feel free to get in touch via the dpi uh, email address so that's apri.sites at dpi.nsw.gov.au and uh, we'll help you out as much as we can. And um, we hope you have uh, success in finding your sites. And thank you for your attention today. And I'll leave you to the next speaker.